My name is Joseph Tunga and I'm the emerging choreographer for the Royal Ballet. I was born in Cameroon but raised up in the East End of London, Newham, and I'm super glad to be here to be able to present you this new festival at the Royal Opera House in collaboration with the Royal Ballet. It's been a crazy experience, I think, and a fun experience, surreal, working with the Royal Ballet over the last couple of years. And I think speaking as a, you know, a black maker, I've been lucky enough that, you know, there have been people in a company that have supported me through this journey and other peers that, you know, have allowed me to feel like I belong and I should be in this space. I think it's really important, I think, to see other black and brown creatives in a, in a Royal Ballet, just because it shows, you know, possibility that it is, it is reachable. And I think that's one of the reasons why, you know, at this year's Black History Month, you know, we have set up a festival that allows more young creatives, more voices to feel like there is a pathway to come into make, uh, to come and make with the company. I think what I would want other people to take from this festival is, I think something I've been saying before, that anything is possible. My name is Mariana Tsempinhoi, and I'm an artist with the Royal Ballet Company here in London. I grew up in Kiev, Ukraine, and I trained in a private ballet school until I was 16 years old. And then I received a scholarship to the Royal Ballet School, uh, from which I graduated into the Royal Ballet Company. Growing up in Kiev and attending the school with predominantly um, children from Eastern European background, I was the only person of color within the whole school. Um, and I did not really have someone to look up to. I was told that it would be difficult for me to establish myself um, in the ballet world in Ukraine at the time because I looked different and I did stand out, not necessarily in the best way. Um, so receiving the scholarship to the Royal Ballet School and being surrounded by people from different backgrounds um, really did inspire me to keep going. And even though being little and hearing things like, you won't make it, still didn't stop me because my dream was too strong to stop. Hi, my name is Francisco Serrano. I'm a first artist here at Royal Ballet. Uh, I come from the US. I'm Cuban American from Florida. Um, I started ballet when I was 13, 14. Something that I didn't really think I I knew I needed or kind of something that I was interested in in the sense of my self-interest in, in this project has kind of grown as it's gone on. Um, even just talking in you know small meetings and with people and also seeing what other people have done. Um, I think it's very important just to try to get this diverse group of talented young beautiful dancers um, a chance to like first of all see this but then also kind of join this space in this world um, so I think it's it's uh, I'm starting to hold this very dear to my heart My name is Marcelino Sembe. I'm a principal dancer with the Royal Ballet currently. I come from Portugal. I've been in the UK for the past 14 years. Um, I, my background started with African dance, then from African dance to hip hop. Then from hip hop, I found out I could do the split, so I was like, let's try the ballet. So I went and did some ballet classes, and um, you know, it was all just, it all happened so organically. It was amazing.
the moment that I found this vocation of dance and uh, entertainment, I found something so special within me that I didn't know I had. And you know, it's been a, a development and it's been such a, a journey. My name is Joseph Sissons. Um, I'm a first soloist of the Royal Ballet and I've been, I've been with the Royal Ballet now for eight seasons. Um, I started dancing when I was six or seven. Three years ago I decided to start my dreadlock journey, um, which was crazy <laughs> because I was very aware of the history of the Royal Ballet and the history of ballet in general and I think there are only, there's me and um, I don't mean to miss anyone out but who I'm aware of there's another principal in Canada who has dreadlocks in the ballet world so it's just not, it's not seen as Eurocentric beauty which most ballets are about, Eurocentric beauty and it was a way for me, I think, after the pandemic especially, I was really mentally destroyed by lots of things that happened. And I remember sitting down and being like, if I'm going to still be in this world, the ballet world, I have to show up as authentic as possible. If there's anything that I would want you know, someone to get out of this interview or, or, or any of it is just that if you have it within you, if you have that itch or you want that, you have something inside you of saying like, this is something that would make me happier. This is something that I hold true to myself. Just go and do it and don't apologize. And if things are in your way, you know, just bulldoze through it and, and, and get to where you want to get to because it's, it's going to be worth it. For me, it was kind of like, I can no longer assimilate. And I'm really fortunate that I have a director like Kevin O'Hare that was like, how do we figure out a way for you to be comfortable? And we had a really open conversation about it. And I was like, these are my boundaries, these are not. And I'm just really grateful for that conversation because now I wouldn't, I wouldn't be as free as I am on stage. Attending the Royal Ballet School, seeing senior dancers that looked like me um, really inspired me and gave me this push to pursue my dream.